fast forward to now, obviously we know what happened a uh, year and a half ago, I think it was, was it a year and a half ago, two years ago when President Trump uh, helped you, uh, uh, you know, get your rank back, you, he gave you a phone call, I think he called you and spoke to you about uh, what took place, would you mind sharing with the audience some of the events that took place uh, two years ago when he got that phone call? Sure. So, I mean, I'll, I'll try and uh, sum it up as best I can. Uh, you know, I, I would, like I said, my last uh, deployment was to Missoula in 2017. Um, we were directed to uh, annihilate ISIS uh, out of Missoula. Um, it was a great deployment. Uh, we successful deployment. We uh, did clear Missoula in time. Um, and uh, unfortunately, there was four, uh, three to four guys in my platoon uh, who we did not get along. Uh, they were younger guys. It was their first time in combat. Um, I think they their eyes were opened, uh, especially on that deployment. It was pretty uh, chaotic, but uh, I think they realized that it, this job wasn't for them. Uh, but instead of taking ownership of that, they threw, you know, pointed the finger at me and pretty much were saying, I put them in harm's way. I made them you know, go out all the time and do, do their job. Um, and you know, their, their complaints were pretty petty. Uh, they went to my command after the deployment with these complaints and the command told them that these were not real complaints and to move on. Uh, so they kept escalating their allegations when they weren't getting the attention they wanted. So then it turned in from I was dangerous to I was a thief. Um, of course, they had nothing to back it up for being a thief. Uh, and they, I think the command finally told them like, listen, either you guys move on or come, you know, come back with something that's uh, legit. And so about six months later, they came back and had said that I had stabbed an ISIS prisoner to death. Um, and they had it on video. Um, the command bought their lie. Uh, I'm not sure if the command ever asked to see the video or not, but because the video never existed. Um, but the command uh, bought off on it, uh, told them to report it to NCIS. And so once NCIS uh, took the allegations and turned it into an investigation, that's where this thing really went off the rails. Uh, we, they had a, a corrupt agent, NCIS agent named Joe Warpinski, took the case, um, very young um, and uh, ambitious, but also very incompetent. And uh, he pretty much formed a prosecution before he started investigating. And he pretty much took whatever little pieces of information he could to you know, throw, at, throw at me during the investigation. And then anything that cleared my name, he would, he would hide, uh, which you know, we would find out during this process. But uh, it was an eye opener. Um, you know, as soon as I was accused or not even acute, like the rumors were out there that I had killed an ISIS prisoner. It was, I was guilty until proven innocent. I was told that by my command. Um, they pretty much shunned me. Uh, they, you know, put me in an office and told me to sit there and will they wait to see where this thing goes. Um, while I was, you know, sitting in that office for about a month, they uh, raided my house. NCIS came, um, they were staking me out for about two weeks. Uh, they came and raided my house while my wife and I were not home, uh, pulling my two youngest or my two boys out at gunpoint uh, in their underwear and then laid siege to my house. Uh, that's when we knew, my wife and I knew this thing was uh, off the rails. Um, but, you know, we, we didn't know what to do at the time. Um, I had, so shortly after they had raided my house, I had moved my family to Florida. Um, and then I was going to geo batch uh, for the, my final year until I retired. Um, they waited for me to come back, uh, after moving my family to Florida and I went to a, uh, uh, TBI clinic, a traumatic brain injury clinic to get checked up. Uh, it's a normal procedure for guys who are about to retire to get checked up for all their injuries mm -hmm. during their uh, career. And I was about a week into that when, and they came and arrested me and threw me in a military prison with no charges, um, uh, no explanation why I was being thrown in prison. They just said they had orders from, uh, Admiral Green, who was the, uh, the Admiral in charge of uh, WARCOM at the time, and then also signed off by uh, Commander Rosenblum, who was the uh, Commodore of Group 1 for Naval Special Warfare. Um, any, they, any, do you know any reason why they arrested you on 9-11? 9-11, uh, yeah. 2018, what was the reason behind that? Was that like a message? I mean, they, they, you know, you could do 9-12, 9-10. 9-11 is 9-11. They, everything they do, and this is what I learned through this process. So all these actions they took against me are done on purpose. Them raiding my house without myself, and my wife there was to enrage me and also to break up my family and also to put shame on our family, which worked because our neighbors 
were like, oh, they just don't do that to people unless you did something. Um, and then uh, during uh, when I was at the TBI clinic, they chose September 11th for that specific reason because they know that day means a lot to us uh, who have been serving the past 20 years. Um, and they thought that that would make me snap and I would do something. Um, obviously, I'm a lot smarter than that. I just, I complied. I, I thought, I was like, this is a big mistake. Um, and I thought that, you know, in my mind, I was like, this is a big mistake. You guys, uh, this will be fixed. But as I came to find out, once you're thrown in a military prison, even as a pre-trial prisoner, um, you are not getting out at all until your trial date. And once they throw you in there, they just keep pushing your trial date back and back and back, hoping you'll take a plea deal. So, you know, uh, the video that you say that they sent to NCIS and, and for audience that doesn't know what NCIS is, NCIS is uh, it's the intelligence organization, right? It's, uh, it's uh, the, uh, what does NCIS stand for? Naval Criminal Investigative Service. Yeah, Naval Criminal in Investigative. Okay. So when, once it goes there, there was one video that was circulating. What was that one video with the body that was limp? And you apologize for that one video. I don't know what they had, John. Was that on 60 Minutes? There was somewhere I saw a video with you. So body. there was pictures. So what they did when they raided my house, uh, they had, they took, they took all my phones, everything. Um, and, uh, there was a picture of me posing with a dead ISIS fighter, uh, along with, uh, 12 other people in my platoon. Um, and also I had sent a text message, uh, to a buddy of mine, um, during that deployment as a joke, um, with that picture saying good story behind this got him with a hunting knife. Uh, that was a dark humor. Um, I, but I'll tell you what, that, that was the best and pe worst piece of evidence they had against me. Um, you know, it was the worst because obviously it makes me look pretty guilty. Uh, but if you, you know, zoom in on the picture and look, there's no blood on the knife. There's no blood on me. There's no blood anywhere. No, no, uh, uh, nothing that shows this guy's been stabbed. Uh, but they took that text message and that picture and that's that was their main piece of evidence they're like we got him and that's they were going around telling everybody they had me dead to rights like he's guilty he's, he's going away um but they had also since these um younger guys in my platoon had said there was a video uh, they were you know they were spreading that rumor as well saying like because the judge had put a gag order on all the evidence so you we weren't allowed to show the evidence to anybody and neither was the prosecution or they, they weren't supposed to, but as we come, came to find out, they were given whatever evidence they wanted to the media, um, to sort of smear my name. But, uh, eventually we got the judge, uh, to, uh, let us show the video to Congress, um, because that lie had gone all the way up to the white house saying there was a video of me doing, uh, this act. And so once we were able to show the actual video to members of Congress and whoever else, it was, they quickly realized that they had been lied to by the Navy. Uh, and that's where, you know, their case started crumbling. So if you like this little short clip from an interview I did, click over here to watch the entire interview. And please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.